Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to my channel. Here we are doing the monthly readings. This is going to be for the month of July 2022. Before we start the readings for all zodiac signs, I do want to give you guys a quick update, let you guys know that we are now using a different tarot deck. Uh, for those of you guys that are interested in this deck, it is called the Black Tarot. As you guys can see, the depictions are uh, very dark. It is very... Um, very much shadowy type of energy here. I feel that uh, the more abstract uh, tarot cards are, uh, for those of you guys that um, have experience with the tarot decks, um, I feel like you're able to pick up more, especially it shows you or it teaches you to um, sharpen your intuition. So I would definitely recommend this for those of you guys that are already practicing the tarot cards or have experience uh this is definitely the type of deck that you will be interested in like i said the depictions are dark um but it is very as you guys can see here they're very abstract and i feel like it really um speaks very strongly to your intuition or it teaches you i should say to learn or listen more to your intuition beautiful deck uh this deck is by uh, Victoria Iva, I believe I'm pronouncing it correctly. Uh, for those of you guys that are interested, you can look at the description box below with the uh, coupon code Pinky Pink Star. Uh, you'll be able to get 20% discount on there. So, without further ado, let's get into your monthlies. How are all of you, my lovelies? How are you guys doing? Hope you guys are doing amazing, or at least um, staying optimistic and positive, right? With everything that's going on right now. Anyways, we are a bit behind on our readings. We've been uh, doing tons of spell work, tons of healing. Um, I feel like we are currently going through this cycle uh, where a lot of people are experiencing a lot of spiritual awakenings um, on a grander scale. And I think it has a lot to do, like I said, not only astrologically wise, but also um, awakening. Um, those that have been sleeping and i feel like uh, it it almost feels like you're on crisis mode if you're definitely going through that take a deep breath be patient with yourself because uh collectively everyone is experiencing some type of um challenge or some type of like i said awakening so all right let's get into your readings this is going to be for all zodiac signs we're going to start off here with aries let's see what you can expect for the month of july 2022 for those of you guys that are interested in spell work or tarot consultations you guys can hit the link on the description uh, box below or at the end of every video you have the um, the link to our online store you'll be able to uh request your appointments on there as well as uh, any of the products that we provide or services that we provide or spell work so all right let's get into it spirit guides ancestors archangels what are the messages that we have here for all the zodiac signs we're going to start off here with aries sun moon rising venus for the month of july 2022 what are the messages for aries sun moon rising venus please allow us to see clearly and concisely what are the messages for aries sun moon rising venus all right, here we go. All right, so we're starting off here with the Hermit, Five of Spears. Four of Spears. The Emperor here, and the Hierophant. Interesting, interesting, and the Moon. All right. So what I'm hearing is uh, for you, Aries, I feel like right now there is a lot of internalizing that's going on right now for you guys. Um, this could be overthinking or overanalyzing. Um, they are telling you here there is something that is very connected to the fear of financial freedom or the feeling of never having that financial freedom. I do feel like for some of you guys, you have been tested or you've been having a bit of difficulty in regards to your finances. Um, my advice would be, oh, you have some extra cards here. Very. Wow, you guys, look. 
these two cards were connected. It is the moon and the sun. It is the polar opposites. I'm getting a very strong message with this. And we also had uh, the Hierophant. And underneath the Hierophant was the wheel, the wheel of Fortune with the Emperor. Um, interesting. I was only going to pull out a certain amount of cards. Um, but these cards were below the other ones. So what they're saying here is you got to shake or cut the fear that you have in regards to your financial stability. They're trying to guide you. They're trying to open your eyes to more possibilities of more ways to make money other than what you've taught yourself to believe it's the only route to making money. So this could be for those of you guys, as an example, that... Um, have a nine to five job and you are trying to go up the ladder, trying the best you can to either get raises or to get noticed or to get higher ranking type of positions. But what they're telling you here is that essentially you're the one that's creating the blockages or you are the one that is setting or putting yourself in the box, Aries. There is a need for you to let go of doing things the old way. You have to be more open or more um, willing to learn uh, to learn a different way of making money or to be a little bit more um, open minded when it comes to business ventures or when it comes to your finances or when it comes to the way you make money. Um, essentially, what they're telling you here is there is a fear of the experience that you've had in the past when it comes to security, when it comes to stability. And that is what is currently hindering your progress. It's almost like I've been through this. I've gone through difficulty. I know what it feels like to be broke. I'm never going to go back to that. But there's this panic behind it. There's this fear or this fear of with the four of, of spears here, the fear of never having your own home or the fear of not having the financial freedom that you wish you could potentially experience or make happen. So what they're telling you essentially here with the Emperor card, this is your card, Aries. You're being empowered. They're pushing you to think outside the box. They're pushing you to expand. You have the Wheel of Fortune here with the Hierophant. So again, the Wheel of Fortune is what goes up must come down. If you've been struggling, you've been going through difficulties, there is a cycle that is coming that is unfolding already for you that is going to give you that push, that momentum that you need to get you to the elevation that you need to go to. But with the Hierophant right next to this card, what they're telling you is you need to be more open to you need to be more open to the possibilities of making money outside of what you would consider structured or your business or your job from the nine to five type of job um it is essentially encouraging you because you guys have to keep in mind the hierophant is all about you know old school it's about values it's about how we were raised it's about how we were taught and what they're telling you here with the wheel of fortune it's it, jupiter's energy is big go big or go home so what they're telling you is think outside of the box that's what's going to bring you the stability the Emperor is the Entrepreneur card. This is the Empowerment card. This is the being confident, not arrogant, but being confident in your pursuits, making shit happen without doubting if you're capable of doing it or not. And the Sun and the Moon, my darlings, this is essentially the yin and the Yang. This is balance. This is harmony. This is also, you know, darkness and light. This is you have everything within you Aries to make it happen as within so without as above so below if you can manage to experience or put yourself in the energy of already having what you're trying to manifest and vibrating from that energy and making your decisions based off of what that you've already have it therefore acting as if it's already there there is no limitations to what you're capable of doing because you are synchronizing. You are becoming one with your desire or with your manifestation. Therefore, the potential here is limitless for you. But it comes down to, do you believe in it? Do you believe you're capable of making it happen? Do you believe that you're worthy 
of financial freedom. A lot of the times we kind of get ourselves into this cycle of, well, our parents struggled or we were raised that it was really difficult and you had to work really hard, et cetera, et cetera. And you start to condition yourself, not because you believe that to be true, but because everyone else is echoing that to you. Therefore, you take it as your reality. What they're telling you here is think big. Think big is the message for you for this month. All right, now let's go to Taurus. Let's see what is coming up for Taurus in the month, uh, the month of July 2022. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, here we go. We have the Six of Swords. The Queen of Spears, which is Queen of Pentacles, King of Spears, interesting. Ten of Swords, Five of Cups, Ten of Cups, wow. There is, there is a lot of changes that are currently happening behind the scenes that we're not aware of. Um... And it may come off as it's almost giving me the energy of feeling like there is obstacles or there are some type of delays. Um, but in that delay, it's almost like the universe is telling you to take a couple of, you know, take a few moments to sit there and analyze and figure out what it is that you want out of your life, Taurus. It is crucial and very important right now. I see you guys walking towards major stability. We have the queen and the king of spears. Queen and king of pentacles here. This is the yin and the yang. This is the masculine and feminine energy. This is stability. This is structure. This is the... I feel like it's not so much in regards to a relationship, although for some of you guys it may be but I feel like it has more to do with the believing in yourself and knowing your worthiness, Taurus, knowing what you deserve and not allowing yourself to put any limitations on yourself right now, especially for the month of July all the way to August. What they're telling you here is there is you're moving towards more calmer, more structure, more stability. But there is something that you're refusing to let go. There's something that you're not just ready to let go. For some of you guys, it could be that you started to experience more financial stability. Although a relationship may be weathering or may be very fragile, may be built on not such a solid foundation. But there is something of comfortability in this connection that has you there. Now, for some of you guys, this could be relationships where you've been committed to each other. You've been living with your partner for a very long time, and it's almost like you've grown comfortable with each other. There's no passion. There's no intensity. It's more about being practical, whether it is living with each other like roommates because, you know, it helps you out financially or just because it's the father or the mother of your kids, whatever excuses you have. And I say excuses because that's what it's coming off as. You're comfortable and you don't want to face the world out there on your own or rely solely on yourself. There's some type of fear that you're holding on to here. With the Ten of Swords, you're refusing to end a cycle. Now, you have the Five of Cups. The ending or the fear of an ending cycle because you feel like you could potentially not find what you're looking for. Whether it's your happiness, whether it's financial stability, whether it's making it on your own, whatever the situation may be. Now, if it's not regarding relationship for some of you guys, it could be that you're very well aware that there is a toxic scenario here in regards to you and your family or the family dynamic. There is something that uh, people constantly rely on you or expect you to um, address certain things and for some of you guys this could be financially they could be relying on you it could be your parents needing some assistance it's almost like there is a fear of standing on your own because you've never been allowed or you've never given yourself the freedom to experience what it is to solely depend on yourself 
But what they're trying to tell you here is only by releasing that fear that you have, whether it's fear of failure, whether it's the fear of never getting married, whether it's the fear of not making it on your own, um, whatever it is, whether you're in a loveless relationship or a commitment, what they're telling you here is that what you fear the most is essentially what's becoming a detriment to your true potential or your true happiness. So it's time to reevaluate what it is that you want out of life, Taurus, and to own it, to not apologize for it as well, not make excuses or try to explain to people why you're taking certain decisions or why you're making certain moves. It's about owning what you're doing and moving forward in a very fiercely way without having the need to explain to others or even to yourself. Because I feel like for some of you guys, there's a feeling of like guilt. And what they're telling you here is you have to release that because that's essentially what's keeping you from your experience of fulfillment um, more than anything. So again, this could be on different subjects of your life right now. This could be regarding relationships. If you're single, it could be the fear of, I lived through that once. I know what it was to be a relationship. Now I'm comfortable being on my own. I don't really need anyone. But deep down inside, there's a desire or want for a long-term committed relationship. It's like, don't do yourself the disservice of convincing yourself uh, because it, it's easier to convince yourself based on circumstance and situation um, than to allow yourself to believe that you deserve and that you're worthy of happiness or financial stability or owning your own, own home. Even if you have parents or brothers and sisters that never have experienced that, doesn't mean that you're destined for the same thing. You're the only one that creates those limitations. All right. Now let's go to Gemini. Let's see what the message is for Gemini. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go. Nine of Cups, Page of Wands, Queen of Wands, King of Wands, Two of Swords, and the Lovers. Interesting. Okay, so what they're showing me here for you, Geminis, whether you're ready or not, there is a union that is coming towards you. Um, I feel very strongly for some of you guys, uh, because we have the queen of wands and the king of wands, there is some type of soulmate connection. Um, and I feel that this is regarding or surrounding someone that you're already aware of, or that you already know, or potentially for some of you guys, it could be a friend. And it's almost like, I see for some of you guys, you're on this path of trying to find yourself or trying to find some balance in your life. For some of you guys, it could be that you've been dealing with a very unstable relationship, uh, constantly questioning or wondering if they want you, if they want to continue, are they playing games type of thing. Um, there is something you're hoping for, Gemini. And what Spirit is telling you is that that which you're wishing is definitely coming through for you. It will be manifesting for you. But you have to let go of how you think it's going to unfold or it's going to manifest for you. So what do I mean by that? If you're in a toxic relationship or dealing with a lot of instability and inconsistency with your partner, don't hold on to that expecting that through them will you find happiness or through them will you find that long-term stability that you've been wanting or craving for. Because when you do that, what you're doing ultimately is you're asking the universe to give you something, something that you truly desire, that you truly want for you to experience. But you're limiting yourself because you're fixated or stuck on wanting that with this person that is not for you. So there is a constant feeling like you're being pulled towards two different directions or like you have to choose your happiness, which to you, your happiness may be the person you're fixated on, 
but it comes at the detriment of your true and authentic happiness. So to me, it's almost like, it's almost like you're wanting or craving to find the stability in a long-term committed relationship, but it's like you're expecting that from someone that is non-committal, someone that is wasting your time, someone that is only interested in the physical. And by you continuously trying to convince yourself that something great or something stable will come out of this, even though they constantly make you feel like shit, or they constantly make you feel or remind you of what you guys are, and it's not necessarily something stable, um, I feel like little by little they're chipping away at your soul. They're chipping away at the desire, the hopefulness, the wanting to think that you deserve better, but then here they are telling you that in fact, they're not the ones that are going to give you that betterness, um, if that's even a word. Essentially, what they're telling you here is you're fixated on someone, you're stuck on someone, um, someone that is not good for you, but then you sit there and complain why you're not happy, or you sit there and complain why you're not, uh, or they're not taking you seriously. What Spirit is telling you is because you're not allowing yourself, you're not opening yourself up to exactly that. And you have con like almost envisioned what it's going to be like in your mind. But what they're telling you is that it's not with that person. So whatever is not working out, you need to release it now. Why? Because that is a detriment to the stability you're looking for. And I see you constantly going around the same cycle. It could be with the same like with the same person or with the same type of energy. Even though it may be different people that you date, it's almost like the same type of energy. You need to give yourself the time and the space to heal because there's healing that needs to happen here. But at the same time, do not apologize for what it is that you want. If you're wanting something long-term, speak up. Be bold about it. And if that's not what they're looking for, show them the fucking door. It's that simple. But stop entertaining things that you know are not going to go anywhere. Because I'm going to be honest with you, Gemini. I feel like the reason why you do this is in essence like a self, um, self-defense self mechanism. I'll keep them at arm's length. Therefore, I won't allow them to fully see me and fully get to know me and know the real me. Because I'm scared that if they do they might not want me or they might not choose me. But there's a little voice there in you that's saying, choose me, choose me. And the reason for this is because they're not necessarily giving you what it is that you want. You're so fixated on them and on being more of what they expect you to be versus taking a, a moment for yourself to figure out, do I even like this person? Do we even have things in common? Or is it just the fact that I feel like they're emotionally unavailable and I try to keep chasing? But at the same time, I know that, you know, on a subconscious level, I know that they're not emotionally available and this is good because it's going to keep me from getting hurt. But at the same time, you fall for them. So you, you're, you're kind of convincing yourself that you're doing it for a reason and ultimately you end up feeling disoriented you end up feeling like you were taken for granted or taken advantage of. And like stop saying that you're doing something and then doing the opposite of that. Because either way, you're getting hurt because you're putting you're putting your hope or you're putting your emotions into people that are empty, Gemini. And if they're empty, they cannot fill you. They will only take from you. So there is a cycle here that needs to end. You need to learn to choose yourself first, Gemini. Only by doing that will you be able to attract or pull towards you the person that loves with the same devotion, with the same fearlessness that you do. All right? Okay. 
Now let's go to Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of July 2022. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys like these videos, don't forget to like the video. Subscribe to our channel if you're not subscribed. All right, here we go. Cancer. All right. Ace of Swords, Eight of Cups, Three of Spears, Six of Cups, Five of Swords, and the Page of Spears. Okay. All right, Cancer. There is some type of news or revelation that's going to be coming out for you in this month of July or coming towards you, I should say. It has something to do with a person or someone that you were dealing with in the past that you walked away from. And there is a desire of wanting to revisit that situation or this person will be popping out again, trying to contact or reach out to you. Although I feel like for some of you guys, there is almost this feeling of the constant, what's the word I'm looking for? It's almost like the constant feeling of being taken for granted or not being appreciated, Cancer. There, there has to be a moment in time where you take inventory of all the people that have hurt you or that have taken advantage of you or that haven't been honest with you. And count the times that you've given them one or two or three opportunities. Forgiveness, and you, you know, allow them to come back into your life. Out of those people that you've done that for, how many times have they proven to you that it was worth you giving them another shot? I'm going to take a wild guess and I'm going to say not very many, if any. What they're telling you here is that you need to stop with allowing people from the past that have hurt you to come back around, knock on your door, ask you for a glass of water, and you keep giving them what they're needing because you feel bad or because you expect that if you were through the same situation they would assist you or they would be there for you because chances are they're not going to be there for you i see you constantly putting faith in people that continuously keep letting you down and this cycle needs to end regardless of how long you've known them regardless of you know i loved them at some point in my life and it looks like they're really struggling right now like by you forgiving, and it's not even a forgiveness type of thing, by you allowing them to come back into your life, you're preventing them from learning the lesson that they need to learn. And see, this is the thing about some people. Some people think that when someone does you dirty and they come back around, they believe that if you forgive them, you're letting go, right? You're letting go of the burden, of the hurt, or the unhealed part of you that is still there or that you're still experiencing because th things were left unsaid. And they think that by forgiving, you're doing yourself a, a service, right? Because you're releasing that. That is true. But it's only true if you don't allow them back in your life. And that's where a lot of people don't understand or they get confused about. So what I mean by that is if you were dating, as an example, a partner and they cheated on you or they betrayed you, you remove yourself from the situation or walk away or end it or whatever. Time passes and they come back around. They come back around, obviously, because whatever it is that they were in search of, they didn't find. Or what they found and believed to be better than you usually turns out the other way, right? When people think the grass is greener on the other side. So they come back around. By you embracing them and opening the doors and saying, I forgive them because I need to forgive them because I'm a better person than them, whatever. In essence, you're removing the lesson that they needed to learn, the karmic lesson. So you're getting in the way of their own karma. Do you see what I'm saying? 
And I feel like you constantly go through this cycle, Cancer, where you're allowing people that hurt you or let you down to come back into your life, whether it's because you're lonely, whether it's because you believe people at face value or you believe that people, you know, are worthy of your trust or that they can gain your trust. But in reality, you trust them blindly. So you end up feeling like they took you for granted all over again. What they're telling you here is that you need to stop that cycle. That cycle needs to stop because if, if you don't, what you're doing is by you allowing people to treat you in a certain way or to make them think that it's okay for them to think that you're, you know, that you're a pushover or that you're a doormat. Um, by you allowing them to think that, they're going to continuously keep coming back around. And it has nothing to do with the love they have for you or that you think they love you and that's why they keep coming back. No, they keep coming back because you keep allowing that. And it's not until you put your foot down and it's not until you love yourself enough to know that you deserve to be treated better than that and show them the fucking door. And once you do that, they're going to completely stop fucking with you. Why? Because you're no longer allowing them to come back whenever they feel like it. Because I feel like for some of you guys, you're dealing with the, with the same person or you're dealing with this cycle of people constantly coming in and out of your life. And it's like, you don't know when they're going to leave, but yet you keep opening the doors to them or you keep forgiving them or you keep expecting a different outcome. My darling, there's nothing more crazier than continuously keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result. And what they're telling you here is that you need to stop doing that because only through stop doing that are you going to build the self-love that you need for yourself because in essence we are the ones that teach other people how we want to be treated by the shit you put up with i hope that makes sense all righty here we go that was very direct cancer i felt like you guys <laughs> needed to hear it um yeah people you know people it seems to me like people got you really fucked up um and today is not the day. <laughs> Stand your ground, Cancer. Don't allow people to treat you like a pushover. Or treat you like you're going to accept them and you're going to forgive them because nothing's ever going to change and nothing great can come from someone that continuously keeps hurting you. All right, let's go to Leo's now. Let's see what Spirit has for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of July 2022. It's almost like... I don't know, Cancer. I know we're shuffling for Leo, but I feel like it's almost this energy, like, I don't know how to describe it. It's a feeling of the, the constant wanting to be better, like, uh, I'm going to forgive them because I'm better. I'm a better person for doing that. Like, no, you're ludicrous because you keep doing it and you keep thinking people are going to change and they're not, so... Wisen up, Cancer. All right, here we go, Cancer. Su I mean, <laughs> Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of July 2022. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. All right, Leo, we have the Knight of Wands, the Lovers. Seven of Spears, Eight of Spears, Ace of Swords, and the Star. Okay. There is a message coming to you the month of July. Um, Leo, and I feel like it's something that has to do with a previous relationship or with a past lover or someone that you were committed to in the past that is coming back around and that is wanting to reconcile with you, wanting to revisit that relationship, or wanting to see if there can be some type of forgiveness. For a lot of you guys, I feel like it's someone that you were definitely not expecting to hear from them again, or you knew them to be extremely stubborn, maybe even a bit narcissistic, and I feel like there is something that's changing within them where they feel like they are completely helpless. Um, they are 
essentially recognizing where they, you know, where they effed up and they're wanting to come back around and wanting to retry. Now, what I'm hearing for some of you guys, this could be in connection with uh, mother figure, father figure. Um, so what I mean by that is if you have children from a previous partner, um, it could be it could be that partner, or the, the baby daddy or the baby mama that is trying to come back around, that is trying to kind of make, you know, references or trying to keep an eye on you. Uh, this could be almost like when they're asking, you know, when they're asking your kids 20, 50,000 questions, because in reality, they're trying to get um, to know like what's going on in your life. If you're dating anyone, that type of scenario, that's what I'm sensing. Because I feel like there is a child or there is someone that is involved that is coming to you and making a comment that it, you're kind of going to put it together. You're going to put one and one together. You're going to be like, okay, why are they asking that? Like that has nothing to do with, with you, meaning with the child or uh, with their dynamic. It has more to do with them being nosy and being all up in your business. Um, again, like I said, if there's children involved now for others of you, I feel like there is a friend or someone that they may go to, and I'm talking about a friend of yours, Leo, um, that they may go to, to try to get some type of information to try to see if you are dating anyone or to kind of test to see if you would be willing, or if the friend can give them more information about you, if you would be more open to hearing from them because I'm going to be honest I feel like this person is a bit of a narcissist or a person that has been extremely stubborn and I'm sensing like they're trying to test the waters before they actually you know reach out or before they actually try to extend some type of friendly conversation that they're hoping would lead to some type of rekindling of this connection so be careful with that, Leo, because I'm going to be honest. I feel like this person hasn't matured. I feel that it has more to do with, like I said, um, life or, you know, whatever they thought they had uh, probably, you know, didn't work out. And I feel like they're coming back around because they're realizing um, that it's not when they criticized you or when they made you feel a certain way, making it seem like you were difficult to love. I feel like they realized they're the one that's difficult to love because no one's going to put up with half the shit you put up with Leo. So I feel that they're coming back around because of that. Not so much because they were touched by the universe and they came to the realization. No, it has more to do with, yeah, realizing that you're not difficult. They were just a piece of shit or they were just the ones that were requesting too much from you and they went and tried somewhere else and found out that people would not put up with half the shit you did so don't deal with none of that fuckery leo all right here we go virgo sun moon rising venus let's see what's coming for virgo sun moon rising venus for the month of july 2022 virgo sun moon rising venus Here we go. All right, Virgo. We have the Page of Swords, Queen of Swords, Nine of Swords, Ace of Wands, Eight of Swords, okay, and the Ace of Cups. I keep... And the Four of Swords. I knew there was one underneath here. Four of Swords and Ace of Cups. All right. Off the bat, Virgo, someone from your past is showing up or popping back up again. Someone that you've been on a disconnect or someone that pulled away, someone that you blocked or they blocked you. There is no communication. I feel like they're coming back around and trying to communicate with you, trying to see if they can rekindle or come back to you, like I said. Now, with the Page of Swords, they've been keeping an eye on you, Virgo. I feel like they're watching you, whether it's through social media, whether it's through TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, any of those sites. I feel like they've been watching you, but very discreetly. For some of you guys, it could be an ex that's been uh, hiding um, through fake accounts or even adding you through a fake account. 
if you've been noticing like people random people adding you or trying to look at your stories or whatever do not be surprised if it's your ex because it is definitely someone that is from your past um that is no longer in communication with you for some of you guys i feel that either you blocked them because there was some type of disagreement some type of argument some type of fight or some type of ending and for others of you it was them the ones that blocked you and if they did block you or ghost you it had a lot to do with the fact that they were chasing other tail, meaning they were dealing with other people and they didn't want you to be all up in their business. And that's the reason why they pulled away. With the Nine of Swords here, though, they're understanding or seeing that it wasn't what they expected or it wasn't what they hoped it would be. Now they're anxious and stressed because they're scared that you've walked away they're scared that you've pulled away or that you're no longer interested in them they're scared that you're moving on with the ace of wands here for some of you guys it could be that you're dealing with someone already uh for others of you it could just represent that you are working on yourself or working towards uh new ventures new endeavors that have you excited um but like I said, for others, it could be that there is a new connection or that there's a new connection coming towards you for this month of July. But they are wanting to come back around. Now, you have two aces here. Virgo, what they're telling you is that you need to embrace the new beginnings. Whatever fell or pulled away or didn't work out or came to an end in the past two months, close the door on that. Because if you don't, you're wasting your time, Virgo. You're wasting your time and you're pulling away or walking away from something that is going to give you something more stable. Uh, like I said, two aces indicates to me there is a new spark that is beginning, a new cycle that is going to bring to you a lot of inspiration and a lot of passion. For some of you guys, this could be career. This could be finances that starts to pick up in the month of July all the way to August. For others of you, it could be that you're starting to do good in business and your finances when you meet a new person or a new partner that comes in for you guys from now all the way to August. The message here is embrace everything that is new and close the door on anything that is old. Out with the, or what's that saying? In with the new, out with the old, or vice versa, whatever the hell that <laughs> saying goes. That's what you need to embrace right now, Virgo. All right. Now let's move on to Libra. Let's see what the messages are for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. For some of you Virgos, I do want to say real quickly, I'm getting that for some of you Virgos, you're going to be offered or moved in your business or the work you're working at. Uh, it could be that it is a move that is temporarily, meaning when they ask you to go towards a different location than the one you're usually working at. But I feel that in that move, for some of you guys, you may actually meet a new person in the month of July. And I feel for a lot of you guys, it could be around the 21st, 22nd, um, where there is a new connection, a new link. For others of you, it could represent that there is a new person that you meet online um, that may actually bring to you some type of opportunity for something long-term. Okay, just wanted to put it out there because that's the message that I got right now. All right, now let's go to Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what the messages are for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for this month of July 2022. All right, here we go, Libra. All right, we have the Two of Spears, Six of Spears, Eight of Wands, the Fool card, Seven of Swords and the King of Swords. Hmm. Okay, there's a decision that you're going to be making, um, Libra, in the month of July. I feel like for some of you guys, it is a difficult decision. For some of you guys, this could be in connection with uh, someone from your past or choosing or having to choose between someone from your past and someone that you're currently dealing with. For others of you, it could be the decision of having to choose between a person of interest versus family or friends. It's a sense of having to make a difficult decision because not everyone around you agrees with that decision. 
So it's coming through very strongly for some of you guys. Um, could be that you're dating or seeing someone that perhaps family member or friends around you don't necessarily agree with that situation. Uh, could be because they're questioning their character. Could be because they're questioning um, the history of this person. There is something that is a bit murky, a bit um, confusing, um, and I feel that it's very tied to the person of your interest. Um, and there is a, it's almost this feeling of having to choose, having to make a decision. What Spirit is telling you here is that it, when it comes to relationships or partnerships, it's very easy. It's a give and take. I don't mean easy in the route of making something solid, right? Because we have to go through difficulties. That's the only way we know if that person is meant for us or not. Why? Because some can, you know, it's kind of like some, you know, flourish in chaos, difficulties and strife, while others will quickly run from that. So a relationship in itself is not easy. That's not what I mean. What I mean is it's very easy when you're making or having to make a decision. If the person that you're with and that you're dealing with makes your life better and makes you want to be a better person, then you embrace that. Why? Because it is reciprocated love. Because they care for you and you care for them. Now, if you're dealing with someone that you're often questioning if they're being selfish or if they're being disrespectful or you feel uneasy or you often doubt them or question their character or behavior or even decisions they make, instead of making you feel stable, they constantly make you feel like you don't know where this relationship is going, then maybe it's time to pull back, Libra. Because there is a new beginning, there is a new cycle that you're currently experiencing for some of you guys it could be that you recently met someone and you're still dealing with the person from the past for others of you it could be that you're still dealing with the person from the past you're not really wanting to end it or bring it to a complete conclusion because there is fear that you don't want to be lonely but what spirit is telling you here is that in this decision to be made for the month of July, it's going to be crucial and important not to follow your heart, but to listen to your head. What your head is telling you is the decision you need to make. Why? Because you need to get emotions out of this dynamic. You need to make or remove your emotions from the situation in order to make a rational decision. So if you're going to like what they're telling you basically is don't rush into making a decision and don't be very quick and hasty on making that decision. Um, because in making that decision very quickly, I feel like there's going to come very quick regret. So just be mindful of that. I I'm going to be honest and I'm going to throw it out there, Libra. I feel like almost the situation where there is an argument or something that makes you feel like you have to make a choice and you don't know what to do. And then the person that you're dealing with may come about with more drama. Um, and I feel like it has more to do with manipulation for you to choose them or to rush into choosing them. So it could be like they kicked me out and you're like, well, I can't kick out my girl or I can't kick out my guy. So you kind of tell them, well, you can crash it. You can crash here. But I feel like they're forcing themselves on you. So that's the reason why they're telling you don't rush into making any decisions. And if you should make a decision uh, in this month of July, regardless of what the situation is, whether you connect with the message or whether it's in general, a decision where you feel like you have to make a quick decision, do not make a quick decision. And if you must make a decision, use your mind, don't listen to your heart because only then will you be able to make a rational decision. All right, my lovelies. All right, here we go. All right, let me... All right, we're going to be doing Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. You guys give me a second. I think someone's at my door.
All right, you guys, I'm so sorry about that. I had a client, um, completely forgot they would be passing by to pick up some candles, so I apologize for that. All right, let's get into it. This is going to be for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of July, 2022. Spirits, what are the messages for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of July, 2022? All right, here we go. Okay, we have the Five of Swords, the Justice card, oof, the King of Wands, the Magician, the Emperor, and the Seven of Swords. Okay. All right, Scorpio. Hmm. So what they're showing me here, Scorpio, for some of you guys, it is a situation that you're going to be dealing with for this month of July that has something to do almost with the theme-like experience or situation that you were dealing with sometime around uh, the lunar eclipse that we experience in, this, uh, in your sign, Scorpio. So it's almost this energy of people being very prideful um, or you dealing with people that your guard is very much up it's almost like a, a feeling of not being, it's it's almost like you're on beast mode right now, Scorpio. And what I mean by beast mode, it's, it's like you're very defensive. And the reason why you're being very defensive is because there is a feeling of being attacked or a feeling of like people not hearing you out and being quick to judge you. Um, now, what they're telling you here, it is important and crucial to keep a watchful eye, uh, Scorpio, because for some of you guys, it's it's almost this energy of I'm getting like I'm getting a lot of messages. I'm not going to lie. So I'm going to put it out there for some of you guys. If you can connect with this message, take it for what it is. If you're thinking of crossing someone. And it is a person that you're very aware. Um, you're very aware that they're very intuitive or that they are gifted in some aspect, whether it's that they do witchcraft, whether it's that they are uh, very intuitive, like I said. Like, be careful to not test them or cross that line, Scorpio, because... I feel like whatever it is that you do to try to one up them, I feel like it's going to be very quick for them to turn around and either catch you in a lie, catch you in a move, catch you doing something sneaky. And I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, you guys. It could be as simplistic as like you being bothered at something and you're upset and you're emotional and you start talking about this person and the person walks in and it's like now you don't know what to say what to do because you're 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 the one that's coming off like you were being spiteful or like you were being sneaky but it was just that you got emotional and it got the best of you that type of scenario now for others of you it could be you the one that catches someone in a line but what they're telling you is should you find or hear, I should say hear, whether you hear about someone um, through other people, meaning rumors or people coming to you telling you, well, this person was talking shit about you. They were saying this, they were saying that. Like, don't be quick to throw dirt in their name or don't be quick to jump on that train because the person that's coming to you telling you all this nonsense is a person that is upset, that is butthurt. Uh, it is a person that their pride got the best of them and they are almost like the victim mentality. It's someone that always plays the victim and they have a tendency of always starting drama, starting shit with other people. Like, don't fall into that if you know that that person that's coming to you telling you has a history of starting drama because I feel like they're just trying to steer the pot 
And what's going to happen is that that's going to backfire and it's going to like put you in a not very good position. It's going to put you in a situation where people are going to question or wonder your character, your loyalty, or the type of person you are. And it comes from the person that is being spiteful and being sneaky towards you. So I feel like it's kind of like it's giving me these vibes of like someone coming to me and telling me, hey, you know, I heard that this person so and so was saying this and this and that about you, you know, da 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 da. But I'm aware that this person that's coming to me always starts drama everywhere they go. Like there's something that happens that and they always play the victim like, oh, I never did like nothing. I don't know why they would say that. But yet you've heard other people talk shit about them. Because they're, they like drama. So I can't sit there and let this person feed me all this information and get me rattled and get me upset because I know they have a tendency of doing that. So by me reacting in a way or saying something, you can accidentally say something that it comes off as disrespectful to other people that are around you. And I feel like it would they would just use those words and twist them um, to make you look a certain way. So my advice for you guys for this month of July uh, is be careful who you trust your secrets to, Scorpio. Be careful who you uh, speak bad about. Um, because like I said, I feel like people may twist those words around and make you look like, you know, like you're the one that's starting drama. Um, but more than anything, what they're telling you here is be careful who you trust, Scorpio. Because with the magician here and the emperor, this is giving me the energy and the seven of swords right at the center. This is giving me the energy of someone that you may... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Someone that you may... I wouldn't necessarily say undervalue, but... Someone that you, what's that fucking word? I'm trying to think of it. Um, underestimated. Someone that you trusted and underestimated that they would not betray a secret or that they would not steer the pot. Um, with the Seven of Swords right at the center, the Emperor is a very narcissistic energy with the Seven of Swords. It is a person that is narcissistic it is a person that is very stubborn it is a person that's very much in their pride and will say whatever they need to say uh to rattle people or to get them fired up so just be mindful of that especially if this is the environment that you're around at work so if like if you're in a working place where people are always talking shit or you know a specific person that's always talking shit be careful what you say around them because they may turn around and make you look like the bad person when they were just trying to steer up shit. All right, my lovelies. Okay. Okay, here we go. This is Sagittarius. Okay, let's see. What is coming for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of July 2022? Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. All right, Sagittarius. You have the Nine of Spears, Ten of Spears, Four of Wands. Wow. Knight of Wands. Five of Wands. The Tower. Jesus Wowzers. Okay. There is major stability that is coming to you Sagittarians out there. Now, nine of spears and the ten of spears, which are pentacles, the nine of pentacles and the ten of, you go from a nine to a ten, um, a major upgrade. There is stability that's coming through for you. There is a lot of stability, not only in your finances, but in the structure of what you consider your home. So as an example, if you're currently living with relatives or family members, etc., by the end of, from now all the way to the end of August, for some of you guys, you're going on this new venture. 
Um, you're going on this new venture that is going to give you or make you feel more financially liberated or financially independent. So I'm hearing for some of you guys, this is getting, you know, buying your first house. For others of you, it's moving out on your own. For others of you, it is creating a home, um, which would be like some type of solidification of a relationship or partnership, uh, some type of engagement. There is a lot of momentum regarding your financial stability, but more than anything, it, this, this message is directly for stability. So I feel like for a lot of you Sagittarians, you've been going through these cycles of having the need to like awaken, having the need to realize whatever it is in your life that's not working out, you have to open your eyes to that and wake up to that and make decisions based off of that. Because what the universe is trying to bring to you, Sagittarians, is stability in every aspect, in relationships and partnerships, in friendships, in family dynamics, in your financial stability. And there is this momentum of stability of progress of cementing of starting something from the roots going all the way up meaning to being able to see the flourishing of that stability but of course it's not going to come easy to you because we have the tower here there is something that you need to completely let go of Sagittarius there is something that you need to stop fighting there is something that you need to embrace and to learn to see it from a very different perspective. For some of you guys, this is a relationship breaking. For others of you, this is a partnership. Someone that holds you back. Someone that is toxic. Someone that is preventing you from progress. It is going to come to some type of conclusion from now all the way to August. Something is breaking in order to break that weak foundation. Because spirit is telling you enough is enough Sagittarius no more sacrificing yourself no more sticking to relationships because you've convinced yourself that it's the best thing for everyone involved it's never about you and in this with the tower what they're telling you is fine you don't you don't want to choose for yourself we're going to choose for you and we're going to break Whatever world you think of right now, we're going to break it and we're going to break it so that you can really see what remains standing and that which what remains standing is what you can build a solid foundation on. So this could be people walking out of your life, Sagittarius. This could be new people coming in. This could be family members. This could be friends. This could be colleagues. This could be people you work with. This could be uh mentors this could be um people that you can rely on or that you can that can help you or guide you through this lesson but the ultimate message here is yes we will challenge you yes we will probably shatter what you consider your world right now but in essence to come out stronger and to come out much more stable um, now for others of you, this could be a relationship that's coming to a complete conclusion and it is something you've been debating or you've been holding on to. Um, and in the month of, you know, now July, all the way to August, there's going to be some type of break away or removal of this connection, um, and, and being able to fight for what you deserve and fight for what you want and no longer apologize for it. So for some of you guys, it could be walking away from something that hasn't been working out whilst you've met someone before that came to an end and it just feels amazing and it makes you feel alive and it makes you feel uh, energized and makes you feel inspired, something that you haven't been for a while. And it's like you're being unapologetic about it because it's like I, it's my happiness at the end of the day. So uh, good for you if you are uh, relating to this message, Sagittarius. All right, now we're going to go to Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What are the messages for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. 
my cappies how are you guys doing okay like i said if you guys are interested in this tarot deck you can find the information on the description box below here we go capricorn we have the sun card justice card two of swords five of wands knight of wands and the tower wow all right so i'm noticing a few cards here that sagittarius uh also had um justice the tower five of wands so for some of you guys if you are dealing with the sagittarius look at their uh go watch their previous message i feel like there could be some type of connection here now what they're showing me here with the sun card there is blessings that are being bestowed upon you capricorn a lot of opportunities that are going to put you almost at the center um, of attention or at the center of other people seeing how good or how blessed you are or how things are going in a very positive way for you in your life. And I feel like there is no accident in this justice card revealing to me. Um, obviously, Saturn right now is playing a very important role. And that is your ruling planet. So what is the ruling planet uh, or sorry, what is Saturn? It is the planet of justice. It is the planet of karma, um, I should say. So this is good karma that is being reciprocated. The universe is reciprocating to you what you have done for others. Um, it is blessing you. It is opening the path for you. For some of you guys, there was some type of destined connection. Um, Capricorn here with the sun and the justice card. There was a blessed union or a blessed connection uh, that could have that you could have experienced with someone a very deep connection a connection that you you can't explain uh, Very deep soul type of connection um, With the two of swords there was I feel like there was a lot of a lot of distractions that were pulling both of you guys towards different directions and the two of swords indicating to me the wanting to shut out the world or wanting to become more inwardly uh, to try to figure out what that connection was or to try to figure out, um, or for some of you guys, it could be even trying to figure out how to move on from that connection. With the five of wands here, I feel like there was a lot of inclination of a lot of people surrounding you or surrounding the relationship or surrounding uh, your prospective partner. It could have been a situation almost like a lot of people, a lot of karma. Um, so when I say karma is a kind of like a person that has a lot of history um, or you yourself could have had a lot of history. And instead of healing, when you two came together, I feel like there was a lot of energy that was pulling you guys or bringing your energy down that when that connection happened, it was tested and both of you guys kind of went on your own way uh, because there were certain things that you still needed to heal from as well as them. And I feel like that revisiting is coming back around. And in that revisitation, meaning in that connection or when this person comes back into your life or they reach out or the universe makes you guys bump into each other because yes, I see it as very unexpected. Um, I feel that this time around, there is potential to, to get it right. There is potential to get on the same page. I feel like it's been a long journey for a lot of you guys. Um, now, it doesn't have to be romantic for some of you guys. It could be a, a friendship, a very deep, strong bond with someone that uh, life kind of took both of you guys in separate paths and there was a longing or a missing of that reconnection uh, for others of you guys it could have been a partner it could have been a person that you never felt this type of connection with um and it left you feeling or wondering like was it all in my head what spirit is saying is no both of you guys just needed to heal from a lot of trauma and i feel like they're they're talking about perfect timing here um and in that perfect timing there's a releasing of a karmic cycle uh, from that partner or that person that you were dealing with with the tower here right at the bottom It is your life completely transforming uh, Not to say in a negative aspect because we do have the justice and we have 
the Sun card here. So it is your life about to change completely. For some of you guys, it could be as, you know, something that is of a shock, something that is something you were definitely not expecting. It could be that there is a reconnection or this person comes back around and they come back around 100% without doubt, wanting to commit, wanting to rush into some type of commitment because in their head, they're seeing it like we've wasted enough time um, or, you know, life is short. Um, we need to, you know, just make it happen. Perfect timing. You're single. I'm single. Uh, that type of scenario, that type of energy for some of you guys, this could be a whirlwind romance that's coming towards you. Uh, that is very unexpected. Um, and when I say whirlwind romance, doesn't necessarily mean something that is going to stick. Uh, for some of you guys, it could just be that it is a very exciting moment in your life um, that is bringing to you a lot of opportunities, a lot of expansion, and for a lot of you guys, a lot of sensual uh, pleasure. Um, and like I said, uh, if we're talking about a person from the past, it is a person that is willing and wanting to commit to you now. Um, and you could have been separated for a year. You could have been separated for two years. It's like they made up their mind and they know exactly what it is that they want. For some of you guys, though, I feel like there's going to be a challenge um, because I'm sensing like, you know, I wanted this all along. But now that you want it, I'm not sure if I want it. So it could be that you're finding yourself in a very different situation or scenario from when they first left or when you guys, you know, first kind of separated, um, especially if you are dealing with another person. Uh, I, I feel like you're going to be torn um, towards making some type of decision. If anything, what Spirit is telling you here is um, if you're dealing with a Leo, if you're dealing with a Libra, um, chances are that or a fire energy, uh, Leo, Sagittarius, uh, Aries. Um, I feel that what they're saying here is that uh, destiny has taken its uh, turn. And I feel that the meeting or the coming together or the reconnecting, it was something that was predestined. So um, not necessarily, you know, aware of how deep this uh, hurt that you experienced with them. Um, but if it is something that it was very painful and very difficult because the love was that strong, give yourself the opportunity of giving them an opportunity to prove to you. All right, my lovelies. Okay. Now we're going to go with Aquarius. Let's see what Aquarius has here. Aquarius and Moon Rising Venus. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of July 2022. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go. All right. We have the Queen of Spears, the Eight of Swords, Ace of Wands, the Moon, Ten of Swords, and Five of Cups. All right. Okay, so Aquarius, I feel like you guys were triggered uh, this past new moon. I feel like there is a constant revisiting or a constant thinking and missing of a specific person, someone that you were very hopeful about, someone that your expectations were rather high, or perhaps you actually seen it manifesting into something very long term, or I should say hoping that it would turn into something long-term or more stable. Um, I feel like the more you got to know the person or the more closer you got to the situation, uh, this image or this uh, seeing the person through rose-colored glasses kind of started shattering and you started seeing the person for really who they were. There was a lot of sneakiness here. There was a lot of like them portraying themselves to be a certain way, only as time progressed, you kind of started noticing certain things. There is fear in regards to starting something new. For some of you guys, it could be that you're still holding on to a past lover um, whilst recently dealing with someone new. Um, 
and I'm going to be honest, I feel like that past lover is coming back around or that person from your past, someone that you haven't fully moved on from, maybe poking their head back around. Just know and understand that it is not for anything long-term Aquarius. I feel like they may be reaching out to you sometime in the night. We all know uh, people get lonely and it's more of a physical thing. Um, I don't want them to like string you along or play with your emotions. I feel like uh, it, it's almost this I'm offering or wanting or I'm open to see where it goes. But in reality, they know deep down that they are just lonely right now and they're wanting to get their jollies off. So whether it's a male or female, it does not matter. Uh, what they're telling you is just remember the difficulties you went through um, to try to get yourself in a better type of state of mind and how difficult it was um, kind of letting go and, and getting used to being on your own again. Um so that you can be more mindful of not rushing or of not letting your hopes, you know, get the best of you and expecting something to flare up again when in reality it's it's almost like it's something passing is what they're telling me. So again, don't get your hopes up. Um, my advice for you would be stop allowing people to play on your emotions, Aquarius. Like, it is time for you to see people really for who they are and believe them. You know, if they're showing you they're assholes, they're assholes, they're not going to change. Um, if they're showing you that they're genuine and authentic, don't take it as aggressive or don't take it as like bold. Take it as like a blessing because they are straightforward and you they're letting you know exactly where you stand with them. Um but again, I feel like you're tempted to giving or opening your doors to someone that is choosing you or coming back around to, for you, but it's because what they're choosing was didn't turn out to be that. So again, be mindful of that. Don't entertain anyone from the past Aquarius. All right. Now we are finally at Pisces. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Let's see what they can expect for the month of July 2022. I feel like a lot of signs are going to be dealing with uh, relationships for this month. All right. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of July 2022. Here we go. One more. Okay. All right. Pisces. We have the Hierophant, Seven of Swords, the Emperor, Seven of Spears, Six of Cups, and the King of Swords. Okay. All right, Pisces, I'm going to be very honest with you. The energy I'm getting here is releasing yourself completely. For I feel like for the month of July, there is this challenge that you're going to have to experience or go through. And it has a lot to do with your past beliefs or what you believed in the past um, versus your experiences and what you've been through these past couple of years. There is almost like, should I stick to what I was taught, how I was raised, uh, you know, what is right from what they've taught you to what is right for me now, do you get what I'm saying? It's it's almost like, uh, as an example, you could have been raised in a home or in a, in a family where uh, they highly respected, you know, a stable job, uh, even if, if an example like an office job that is a nine to five, um, you know, it may not pay great, but at least it's something stable. Versus you deciding, I want to venture out and I want to be an entrepreneur and I want to freelance or I want to do like something that is very opposite of what they, you know, how they raised you to believe uh, stability was or a job was. Um, and it could be that you are going through this cycle of like entrepreneurship, for example, where you're traveling to different places and 
you are, you know, being on social media or doing things very differently from, you know, how you were raised. And you may feel like people are critiquing you or judging you. Like you shouldn't do that because you don't know how stable you're going to be, et cetera, et cetera. And it's almost like them, like just judging from everywhere. Um, and there's this feeling of being restricted, feeling like I should go back to what I know. But what spirit is telling you is no, there's been major changes, um, major lessons that you've gone through. And one of the lessons that you need to go through right now, Pisces, and that you need to master is to believe in yourself, regardless of the noise outside of you. So regardless of people judging you, regardless of people critiquing you or telling you, no, this is not how you do it. You do it this way. Um, it could be as simplistic as like, uh, I don't know, growing a lemon tree or something and your parents or, you know, your aunts or whatever are telling you like, no, this is how you, you water it so often. And you're like, no, but I've noticed that, you know, it's growing much quicker if I do it this way. It's like people want to get involved in your life to tell you how to live your life. And what spirit is telling you here is take the lessons you've learned in the past and learn from that right? So that you don't make the same mistakes. But when it comes to how you choose to make a living or how you choose to live your life, or if you were raised that you're supposed to get married when you're living with someone and you didn't get married, but now you're living in a communion, meaning like living with your partner, um, but yet you're still being criticized for it. You start questioning all of that, right? You start questioning like, am I wrong? Am I, what spirit is telling you is, Continue on the path that you're in right now, Pisces. Like I said, take the experiences that you've gone through because they will assist you and help you in not making the same mistakes again. Um, but ultimately, this life is for you to live it and for you to experience it. And you cannot experience it through your parents or your parents can't experience it through you or your brothers or your sisters or your uncles. Ultimately, it is your life and it is for you to experience it. So stop, um, try the best you can to stop listening so much to the noise. Listen to your intuition. If you're excited about something, don't let people shit on your parade. Uh, I know they say, you know, the rain on your parade. <laughs> no, don't let them shit on your parade. If you've worked at something and you've worked at it really hard and you're starting to see some type of result, it's okay to be excited about it. It's okay to pat your back. It's okay to be proud of yourself. Don't allow other people to tell you, oh, no, that's, you know, be, that's being cocky or, um, you know, don't 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 post a lot of pictures of yourself on social media because it just, you know, shows that you're a very uh, narcissistic person or whatever it, the situation may be. You know who you are deep down in your heart, Pisces. Don't allow other people to make a decision about who you are because no one in this world knows you better than you know yourself. And don't apologize for being proud of yourself or don't apologize for uh, even the experiences you've gone through in the past, the mistakes you've made in the past, because ultimately it's leading you to where you're going. So my lovelies, what they're telling you here is it's time to detach yourself from what other people's expectations of you are or have been up until now. And it's time that you start living your life to the fullest without any apologies and just seeking your passions and your excitement and what makes your heart skip a beat. All right, my lovelies, sometimes you need to be fearless in that because if you pay a lot of attention to the outside noise, it becomes extremely, extremely loud and you're not able to listen to your intuition or to listen to the little voice in you, Pisces, that is telling you, be proud of what you've gone through because you are now where you're at and you shall continue marching on stronger than ever. All right, my lovelies, I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. I love you guys all and stay safe. We'll see each other soon. Till then, bye.